Uh, Assistant Commissioner Josh Laird uh, from our planning uh, division is here, and then we'll turn it over to Dennis uh, to present you. Commissioner Laird. Thanks, uh, thanks, Marty. So, again, I'm Joshua Laird, Assistant Commissioner for Planning with the Parks Department. So we're here tonight to, uh, to share the good news that we are moving ahead with the second and final phase of our White Island project. I think Marty just thanked the electeds, but I particularly want to thank again Assemblymember Mizell and, and Councilman Fiedler who have, uh, who have really uh, um, sort of held our feet to the fire throughout this project and, and, and helped guide us into turning this into the successful project it's going to be. Um, so for those of you who don't recall, the work we're doing, a $15 million project we're now going to be completing on White Island, stems from mitigation for the Gateway Estates project uh, out uh, between Spring and Hendricks Creek. Um, that project with its small and its housing uh, disrupted a grassland, upland grassland habitat that existed on the site and uh, dating back to the original environmental impact statement in the 1990s, uh, the department agreed to perform mitigation in the form of creating habitat elsewhere and after or I think 10 or more sites were investigated, White Island was selected as the best site. And it has taken us many years to get to this point. There have been a lot of logistical and funding problems with this project, but it's all come together in, in recent years. It's going to be a fabulous project. Although it stems from the mitigation at Gateway, it's really a part of a much broader effort to do ecological restoration work in, all over Jamaica Bay. Marine Park is a huge recipient of that work. In addition to White Island, the Army Corps is doing a major restoration project uh, in Garrison Creek. Um, I'm sure mo many of you are aware we just did a major million trees planting, uh, I think 15,000 trees over 10 acres in Marine Park. So that's a lot of ecological riches for Marine Park. The Army Corps is doing work in Jamaica Bay. The Department of Environmental Protection with its new green infrastructure plan is going to be investing substantially in this area. Um, so uh, really good things to come for the environment in this area. This is for White Island. I'm going to turn it over to uh, Dennis Flynn, our capital project manager, to tell you what we're doing and the schedule. Uh, at that point, uh, the edge of the island will be stabilized with a little bit more permanent solution. I think much more permanent solution. Um, might be tough to say, but uh, the <coughs> certain areas are along the island where you're seeing the steeper slopes are basically right now where you see areas with the sandbags. Um, what we're basically going to be doing in those areas is that we'll be taking the sandbags out, and then because of the steepness of the slope, also the wakes from the boats or just general tides. Over you'll see what are large rocks, or we call riprap, in those areas. Um, because of the steepness, we really can't get any kind of vegetation to grow on that. So, and they take a, a sort of a larger brunt of the wave action that comes in. So we need a little bit, something a little harder treatment at those edges. So in those edges, a lot of those are basically what we're kind of shooting for. Those are areas are where there is pure sand, you know, further down. Fragmites would come up to it and stop because it's pure sand. So what we're basically trying to do is create that habitat and expand it out along the rest of the island. So um, at that point then we, we've gone through all with DEC, going through all the permits and everything else like that, and last summer we got approval for our final 100% design, so which is good, and which it's done as mitigation. Uh, so there's basically two goals for that we're trying to accomplish with this. The first one is the restoration of getting back to 56 acres of grass and habitat that was lost at the Gateway Estates. So that's part one. And the second part is also the stabilization of these areas along the edge of the island where you'll notice there's sandbags. And a number of years ago, I want to say about eight years ago, there was uh, actually problems because it is a formal landfill that was closed in the 60s where garbage was breaching out the side. So probably about eight years ago, Parks did an emergency contract, and that's when the sandbags were brought in because they were done at the time as a temporary measure with the understanding that this would be following up closely behind. So it was a little bit longer than we wanted to, but we're at this point now. So basically, this other part is to really kind of stabilize the edges of the island with more permanent solutions. So those are basically the two goals we're trying to accomplish with it. 
And to give an idea of how we got here, back um, there were basically two phases to the project. The first one started around 2000, uh, 2007, 2008. And the first part, or the first phase, was basically a clearing of the vegetation on the upper portions of the island because there was uh, Phragmites out there, very dense, and we needed an updated survey to do phase two. So at that time, that's when the Amontasaur machine's out there clearing all the Phragmites and taking down the trees and all that stuff. So that was done, the survey got completed, and then from that part, we were able then to move into sort of phase two. In the meantime, a big portion of the project is sand. Uh, what we're trying to do is basically cap it with an additional sand to help uh, establish the grassland habitat. And what we really needed was somewhere in the area about 150,000 yards of sand. So what happened was that in 2009, we were able to tap into an Army Corps project in which they were dredging in the Rockaway Inlet. And instead what we were able to do is, for a very good price, is get the contractor, instead of taking the sand someplace else, they were able to divert it to the island and stockpile it on the island at that time. At that time we weren't allowed to spread it because we were still going through the design process with DEC. So at that point it was like, well we just wanted to acquire the sand because it is a large volume. They were able to bring it in by barge, get it on the island, at least now it's sitting there waiting for us until we got through the approval process with DEC. So that was done and that's what you see out there now is there's basically three main sand piles that are out there now. Currently on the island there's two 